Hello my friends, welcome back to another new tutorial of 2022. This week I'm going to paint something really nice. I want to paint a kind of a sunset-y snow scene. Alright, lots of pinks, purples, mauves, a little bit of yellow in the sun going down. Um, I have a fairly big canvas. I might get it done in one tutorial. Uh, there's not much in it, just uh, trees coming up with some foliage and a nice kind of a, a nice sunset-y pinky kind of a background okay um i'm painting this for my house inside i have a picture inside hanging already but i changed the colors of the walls so it's clashing so i want to just replace it with something a bit more inviting a bit more warm um mauves grays that kind of thing so i'm going to paint it on this it's a fairly big canvas it's uh 24 by 18 i think would that be right it's 24 by 18, I think. Could be a little bit bigger, but it's in that kind of area. Um, I haven't measured it. I primed this just once with an undercoat, a simple white undercoat, and I gave it a, a rub of light, sand, very thin, fine sandpaper then. And it's lovely and smooth. So, um, nice warm colours today. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Please do subscribe if you're not subscribed because you're missing so much fun and so much painting. Um, I'd like to try a bit of everything on the show so um i did a lovely wall art recently um you know if, you know abstract would not be my cup of tea as they say um here in ireland but it was nice to try something different it was for my wife and she was really really happy she was thrilled with the painting it looks lovely hanging up on the wall in fact when i finish this i'm going to frame it and i'm going to show you what hanging with the other one up in the landing in my my home my home inside so yeah um that's it thank you all so much for your support um you know i'm thinking more about these live streams um i'm kind of just thinking what's the best time because i know a lot of you from the states will be on a different time zone so it's just trying to find a nice balance so that i get enough people looking and uh, that can comment and we can chat and i can message you back and all that kind of stuff so i'm thinking maybe late in the evening here in ireland so around 6 or 7 p.m perhaps um that should give people most people time to be up and about and um you know i don't know if people are working or not working but it's just something i want to try and we'll see how it goes um i've never done a live stream on youtube i just hope that the video quality is fairly good and the audio is good and all that kind of thing so there won't be any titles and music and all that kind of stuff um it might be worth a try i think it'll be a bit of fun so uh, let's go and have a bit of fun with this uh, enough of me blabbering on i want to get a cup of coffee and we we'll start with this lovely lovely painting behind me uh, if you want to follow me along please do i'll try and keep it as simple as possible okay thank you and happy painting okay here we go um there's the reference photograph i think that's lovely lovely colors a bit of sun coming through the trees let's see if we can create something nice with this um okay here's my palette a paper palette i have titanium white which i need more of let me get some titanium white um i have naples yellow burnt umber phthalo blue uh magenta cadmium red alizarin crimson and some lamp black there are my colors i have some turpentine with linseed oil as well um i won't need to oil this i don't think okay i'm going to use a nice big brush today it's uh, from rosemary and co it's a short flat and there's no size on this uh there is actually it's number nine number eight or number nine i think anyway any large flat will do let's dampen the brush and let's mix up some nice color for the sky now before i do this i'm just going to draw a quick reference line um, for my land over here okay so i'm going to come down a good bit on this comes off down like that at a slight angle and then let's get some perspective for the ditch you have a lovely kind of a ditch here goes off up at a slight angle like that and another little bit down next to it like that okay just nice and loose now the sky a very mauvey blue so i'm going to start with some white and i'm going to mix a good amount of this now because we have a lot of sky okay a huge amount of sky um if i find the canvas is a little dry to work on i might just oil it with a quick coat of um, linseed oil as well just to help really but um 
I think we'll be okay. I'm going to take some magenta. Beautiful, beautiful pink colour. Magenta. It's wonderful for snow scenes. And a bit more white. Make a good mix of this now, okay? Nice and soft and creamy. Get right in there and mix it up nicely. Then a hint of phthalo blue. I'm going to start with a little because it's a very strong colour, okay? So a little hint of phthalo blue. And always with phthalo blues and any blue in general, start with little amounts, okay? And work up. Now, let me take a look at this. Okay, it's a little bit light. Let's go with more phthalo. And I suppose it's probably best to be a little bit darker than lighter. Um, but bear in mind, if you notice the foliage on the tree, it's darker than the sky. So don't go too dark with your sky, okay? That's what I'll say. Allow for that dark foliage to go on later. A bit more white. M more thinners. Thin that out, make it nice and thin. Going for a nice warm blue, okay? Nice warm, warm, very warm blue colour. Now, let's try that. Ah, that's better now, isn't it? So I'm going to put this across my sky, all the way across. And the canvas is not too bad now. It's moving along nicely. That's quite nice. And I hope you can see the sky okay now. I hope there's not a glare on the canvas or anything like that from the lights overhead. I hope it's all looking okay for you. Uh, a bit more blue. I might add the tiniest touch of crimson, maybe, just to try this, just to make it slightly a kind of a duller sort of a blue. Let me just try it and see. Okay, that's not bad. And this brush I'm, brush I'm using is a soft synthetic, okay? It's probably more in like into a, a watercolour brush or acrylic. Um, I stay away from uh, rough bristle brushes because I just don't like the effect they give me. I prefer a soft brush. Now, crimson and magenta coming down. So a nice warm pink, okay? And let's start in the centre. And walk away out. I'm just going to hold the canvas. And there's a nice bounce on the canvas as well. I love using stretched canvases like this when there's a lovely sort of a bounce in the canvas. It just makes it, it gives it a lovely feeling when you're painting along. There we go. And a bit more over here. Now, I'm going to stand just for a moment so I can see the colours properly because I have a bit of a glare on my canvas looking up at it. So I'm going to stand just for a moment and I'm going to soften all of this nicely together. There we go. And I'm going to leave some of the brush strokes, you know what I mean? I like a bit of a texture on the brush stroke as well from time to time. So I don't feel I need to soften this with a blender brush or anything like that. Okay, coming down, I'm going to start softening this and warming it a lot more. So, thinners, crimson, white, and let's get a little hint of magenta. So I have a nice selection of reds and pinks on the palette. That really, really helps. And I'm gonna come down to around here. And I'm gonna just start here just to get my bearings and color and stuff like that. And the hues to make sure I'm not overdoing it. I'm gonna start lightening it slightly as it comes over. And look, make your paint nice and thick now, but kind of creamy, okay? Um, you know, fill your brush with paint, don't be shy. Put plenty of paint in there and mix lots together. Um, okay, now, coming down, I'm going to add a little hint of cadmium red. I can see a nice cadmium red kind of uh, would mix with a little bit of Naples yellow down towards the bottom there. It's a lovely colour. I'll try cadmium red, a little Naples yellow. And I'm going to try that just along the bottom here, go right across. And again, this is just really filling in. I just want to get all the canvas covered, do you know what I mean? And let's go up there again. Fill that all across. And I'll go across the bottom on both sides with this colour. I'll then be softening it out slightly. And I'm going to start warming the colour as it comes up as well. 
magenta, some maples, yellow, little cadmium red again. And as it comes across, it starts getting a little more on the pinky side, doesn't it, as it comes across. But just play around with it and have a bit of fun. Try different, try different pinks. Do you know what I mean? Just have a bit of fun with this. Now, I'm going to start going up. Um, I'm going to take some white, some magenta and a hint of thalo. Now, I want this more on the pink side. So let's try some more white and a little more crimson, perhaps. And let's go up over here. And it's very difficult kind of to go wrong when you're using um, pinks and blues, okay? It's very difficult to kind of make any major mistakes because they're, they mix well together, these two colors on the canvas. So just try not to overthink it, okay? That's what I would say. And just try and have a bit of fun with it, yeah? Let's go, let's just pop a little bit more turpentine in there. When I say turpentine, I mean thinners. There's a little touch of linseed oil in this turpentine already. So it makes it nice and kind of slippery and oily. Okay. Let's go up there and get that in. Soften that up. You can really, now if you want, you could just walk from top to bottom. It's the same thing. Um, but I like to kind of sometimes get some of my warm colours in first at the bottom. So I know then that I can't clash with those colours and I can kind of go from those colours then with my mixes so I'm not overdoing it, okay? So, we have a nice simple sky in there now I have a little bit of a dent in my canvas as well um, from laying it against the wall earlier but it's fine, it's only for my hallway so it doesn't matter, I don't mind okay, there we go, soften that in and make another little bit of pink for that cut, that side over there. A little bit of magenta, a little bit of cadmium red, and a bit of white. Uh, when I paint things like this, I tend not to focus too much on mixing. I don't put too much time into mixing. I just mix them quickly and put them on. Because if you overthink it, you know, if you're going to be thinking too long about your mix, um, it needs to be kind of spontaneous, I find, painting like this. It needs to be very spontaneous. Now let me just check, make sure that is looking okay on camera, that you can see all those colours. All right, that's fairly good, that's nice. Now, I'm going to start darkening up around the top slightly, okay? So I'm going to dampen my brush again. Mix all this in the same spot. I'll take a little phthalo blue, a little crimson, and again, dampen that just to make it nice and thin. Some white. And let me try that. No, that might not be bad. It's a nice mauve grey kind of a colour, okay? Go right across the top of that. I just want to darken the top corners, okay? Just along the top, just slightly. Softening this with the brush. You don't have to go absolutely crazy. Now, I don't know if you can see one or two dry spots there on the canvas. That's normally caused by um, some of the parts of the canvas which weren't primed properly. So maybe the brush kind of skimmed over the canvas without putting the paint, the undercoat on. That normally happens when the canvas is not primed really well. I just gave this a very fast coat of primer. So I just missed a couple of little patches, but that's fine. We're going to be painting over this again later okay so don't worry too much about that now i want to darken the top again with a bit more of a purpley color let me just get a nice rich color out here now phthalo blue with magenta now i don't want to go too purple with this i'll tone it down with a touch of black okay ah that's not bad now i like that so i'm not going very very rich a touch of black, just a hint of black there, tones down the purple, the purpliness of it. So I want nice rich colours up on top. And I'm going to soften that down. 
soften it right down all the way. Look, just go right down until it disappears. Okay, now that will do. That will do fine. Moving on to the soft, warm colours down at the bottom. Okay. Um, now I will just give my brush a quick clean, dip it in some turpentine, rub it on the cloth, get most of that blue colour out. Okay, because I don't want any blue in this. Now that's not too bad, that's fairly clean. Um, nice warm, kind of a pinky orange down at the bottom. I'm going to take some cadmium red, some white. But not too much white. I don't want this very opaque, like a pastel. I want a nice rich colour. And then I'm going to take some Naples yellow. So that gives us a beautiful, warm, peachy, pinky kind of a colour. A salmon colour, okay? The colour of a salmon. Similar to that. Let's put this in. Soften this in here. Make it nice and warm. Look at that lovely colour. Fantastic colour. And if you know me know me well by now you'll know that i use naples yellow in pretty much every painting i do i just love it it's a beautiful color um, as it comes up i'm going to start adding more naples yellow just where the sun is starting to come into play and that will give us a nice color then to work on with our sun all right so a little bit na more naples yellow coming into it as it comes up like so soften it out there we go, just like that. And as it comes down, then we want to start warming the bottom end again, okay? I want to really warm this up. Some cadmium red, Naples yellow, lots of it. And let's really give that a nice warm colour at the bottom there, okay? And I'll even come over here and up that side as well. Now, I want to make it slightly more yellowy, okay? Just a little towards the bottom. I want this colour really to kind of jump out because most of the colour in the, the painting, it really jumps out from this warm section down at the bottom down here, doesn't it? That's really kind of where your eye is drawn in the painting. So I want to kind of accentuate that colour down at the bottom. There we go, that's a nice warm colour. Now, give that a quick clean on some tissue and I'm going to go right into some Naples yellow and I'm going to start putting some Naples yellow where I think the sun is, roughly. I'm just going to soften it through. And by the way, I have plenty of paint on my canvas now as well. Okay, lots of lovely thick paint. Thick layers, as they say. Then I'm going to take a touch of white in with that Naples yellow, just to brighten it ever so slightly, and soften that through again. So I'm building up my layers, layer upon layer, okay? So we have a lovely bright spot in the centre. So let's go again. Now I might take some cadmium yellow later, just to really whiten that up. Let's try this. Going lighter with more white. Nice colour, look at that, that's lovely now, isn't it? So, again, I'll stand back now, always stand back and take a good look. A good, good look. I think I may darken again the top corners. I may just make them slightly warmer because I'm not 100%. I think it needs to be slightly darker. Would you agree? Let's take some more phthalo blue and magenta maybe a little crimson in there and even just with that nice rich color let's try some of that now that's a bit blue let's take some more magenta and a bit more crimson crimson just to warming it slightly because there's a lot of mauve in this painting so a bit more crimson again let's go with that Kind of coming down at the sides, you see. Maybe a hint more crimson. So 
So you see, you can add as you go. You can, you know, you can change. That's the beauty about oil painting. You can change the colours as you go because it's still wet. Do you understand? So it makes it much easier for you to add colours and change colours. If this was acrylics now, this would be very dry and very awkward, very hard to work on. But the oils stay that nice, wet, slippery kind of a feeling. So it's fantastic. Now, a bit more pink into it. You see me just sort of dragging the paint across, trying to soften it in as best I can, just with this brush. You can use your blender brush if you like. If that makes it easier for you, then absolutely. Now let's take a little bit of white and a little bit of cadmium red into that. Let's just soften that down so it softens in nicely. And just keep going over this as much as you need to until you're happy with the result, okay? I'm going at a slight angle with my brush strokes just to take some of them out. Give this guy a little bit of movement, perhaps. There we go. And don't worry about it because the trees will cover a lot of this as well, okay? Now, again, I'll sit back and take a look. And that's a bit nicer now, isn't it? So I'm glad I made that decision to darken that. Okay. Next, I'm going to put a hint of some cloud in down here. Um, before I do that, I might try and lighten that sunspot just in the middle. I'm going to take a hint of cadmium yellow. Okay, just a hint. Tiniest little bit is all you need. And I just want to create a nice little sunspot in the center. I'll use a nice little soft brush. A um, little bit of cadmium yellow, lots of white, okay? Just really to make it pop, I suppose. Let's go around here, look. And don't worry about getting this perfect, okay? Don't worry, it's, it's gonna be covered by branches and all that kind of thing. So don't worry too much about getting the color and the shape absolutely circular. This is supposed to be fun. I'm going to soften that around. Okay, then I'm going to go nice and bright. Lots of yellow, lots of white. Let's try that. Just pop a little in here and there. And then a little bit of white just in the middle. Yes, let's try a little touch of white. Soften that around. Okay, it's just to give the idea of a bright spot in the center of your sky. Now, let's maybe go a little bit wider with that. Okay, that's fine. That will do. Absolutely fine. Okay, some clouds. Let me get another brush for some clouds. A nice little brush. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Something like this. And it's mixed just a simple mauve. We don't need much of this now. It's just a little bit of cloud coming down into the painting. Let's take some blue, a little bit of crimson. Uh, maybe even a hint of cadmium red to warm it. A little bit more on the cadmium red side and let's pop a few let's just try this first ah, that's not bad that will do a couple of clouds coming over here like that there we go soften it in Take a little more red, I think. Pop a little bit more red into it as it comes over. Making it warmer. Pop some red in here. And I'm even probably going to soften it in slightly as well. 
I'm going to soften it in up here as well. I want to leave this then sort of just disappear into the rest of the sky overhead, okay? I can use my other brush for that. I'm going to let that soften in up overhead, okay? Just with the tip of the brush. And soften it all together and make it nice and soft. There we go. Dragging it across. Isn't that nice? Now, a little bit more cadmium red in that. And I'm going to pop another one or two. Just across the bottom here. And this is just a suggestion. Clouds will cover a lot of this. Or, sorry, not clouds. Um, the trees will cover a lot of this. So don't be too particular about all of this, okay? Just let it, let the brush sort of just dance around on the canvas. Dance around, jump around, and, you know, just allow it to take on its own form. That's all. Nice and simple. Okay? Even something like that now, just something simple like that is absolutely fine. I'm going to just straighten some of these. Okay, there we go. No, that's not bad, is it? It's just a simple suggestion of some cloud off in the distance. Done. Let me get a soft brush and just soften some of those. Because these want to be nice and soft. They're off in the distance, so I'll make them nice and soft. There we go. And up here, let's go up here too, look. Why not? Sure, why not? There we go. Done. Okay, again, let's sit back and take a quick look and gauge how we're going with this. Now, that's looking good. I'm happy enough with that. Let's, um, boom, 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 boom. Let's start some of the trees off in the distance. Yeah? Let's give them a shot. Okay, um, I'm going to go with the same brush. This is going to be a warm grey I'm mixing, all right? So, some lamp black, a bit of white, and some crimson. And a hint of blue, okay? I'm going with a soft grey. But I want to try and keep it a little bit on the warm side as well. So plenty of crimson in this. And let me just check it. Okay, that's not bad. Let's put in a suggestion of some trees along here. And when I'm doing this, I tend to start with the darker colour, okay? So I'll add a little touch of snow onto these as well, as I'm going. So I'll just put in the dark colour first, just like this, okay? Just a little suggestion. And when you get to the top of the trees, simply just dab like this. Look, up and down, up and down, up and down. And you could use even just your fan brush for this as well. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen this kind of technique with the fan brush. Just dab, 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 dab. All the way along. And I'll put a suggestion, tiny suggestion, of some of this off in the distance as well. It could be just a little row of bushes or something like that, okay? That's all. Small little row of bushes or trees off in the distance, okay? Now, just leave it at that. Then I'm going to add one or two small little tree trunks way way off in the distance so i need a nice small little brush for this um i would say just a little black with some burnt umber okay nice dark color lots of thinners and let's just suggest one or two tree trunks off in the distance it's just a suggestion that's all and then a little bit of snow 
Okay, we need a little bit of snow on the top of these. I'm going to just find a brush for this. It's important to get a nice brush because I can use three or four different brushes before I find the one that works and the one that I think is right for the job. So I'll try this one now, small little worn flat brush. Um, I'm going to go with some light mauve, okay? A nice light mauve. Take some of the blue and some of the white, some of that mauve colour and mix it together. Let's try some of this. So, let's go like that, look. Simply just dab, 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 dab. Kind of along the top edges of the tr those trees. And it's just a suggestion. I want to try and, you know, I want to simplify this scene. I don't want to make it too over complicated. So I'm just simplifying it. That's all. Pop a little suggestion of some white foliage popping down from those trees. And it's just here and there, you see. Now, you can do the same with these ones in the distance. And it's really only just to tell the eye that there's a little bit of snow here and there on some of those bushes off in that distance, okay? That's all. It's just to tell a story. A little bit across here and there. The trees will cover a lot of this, so don't be too, too particular, okay? No, it's not bad, is it? It's okay for the job that we have. Um, ground. Let's mix a nice mauve for this ground. Take some white, mix it in here to this lovely mauve colour that we have already. Take some magenta, little blue, and some white. Now I don't want to be going too grey with any with, with these colours, so I want to make them nice and vibrant. Okay? Um, I've been careful with my mixes because if I start mixing them all with the same area, you're going to end up with kind of muddy colours, and I don't want muddy colours. So let's just cut in under that now with a nice, kind of a mauve a mauve hue. Magenta. Magenta is perfect for this. And let's go across here. Just cut in under those, off in the distance. Fill that in. And come down here. And you could just use this tutorial now just to improve certain parts of your painting. You know, you could just take the sun, for example, or the trees, or just the snow, or even just the colours, and incorporate them into your own paintings. Okay? And soften right into some of those up in the distance. Look. There we are. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, I need some white. I'm going to just add a little hint of snow onto this field. I think a hint of snow would be nice. I'm going to get a brush, a little, nice little fan brush. I need some thinners. I'm running out of thinners fast. There we go. And let's just pop a little touch of texture because that now looks kind of relatively flat, doesn't it? Let's just pop a little texture onto that here and there. A little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of white. And let's just go, let's go around here, okay? Let's pop a little touch of texture. That will just help give it that snowy kind of a feel. Now as it goes off into the distance, I'm gonna really soften it in, okay? And again, as I keep saying, it's just an impression. All right? Don't try to, don't be trying to paint this exactly perfect to make it look like actual snow because that will never work. You could just leave it, put a couple of brush strokes through it as well. Um, but I just want to get a little bit of texture through the field. That's all. And you can soften it all off into the distance. So, just a nice little snowy feel, a little snowy texture. 
Okay. There we go. That looks okay, doesn't it? I'm going to move on and do the, the bushes. Okay. Once I get the bushes in, then I can concentrate on this lovely tree. So I think the bushes are next. And let's see now what could we do for these bushes. I'm thinking this bigger brush. I'm thinking if I use a bigger brush, I'll be less focused on detail. I just want to keep this very loose. So let's get some burnt umber, some magenta, and some black. Okay, because it's very, very dark, really. It's almost, if you look at it, it's almost like a pinky black, really. So lots of both of those. And let's just try this now. Let's go and have a bit of fun with this. Bear in mind, a lot of this will have snow going back over it again. Okay. A um, bit more magenta. Keeping it pinky. I want to keep it pinky. And I'm just pulling in just look very loosely this bank small little bank just there I'm not worried about the finishing shapes of this it's just really to fill it in I'm going to be using my snow to cover uh, most of this pretty much okay so you know don't be don't be too particular about it There we go, let's put another one here, a slightly higher one. Um, ba -ba boom, all along here. So getting higher on this side will give you that perspective. Getting smaller and smaller, okay? Let's go up here with one or two bigger ones. Let's have a bit of fun. Keep it nice and loose. Okay, now, there we go. a nice loose painting this I'm gonna then just clean that take some black I'm gonna pop some nice black in here and there just to create some shadows really dark spots okay that's all some nice really dark spots here and there okay that's that's absolutely fine that will do that's all we need um, now getting the snow on this giving it that lovely kind of snowy frosty feel I could use this little brush as well if I wanted to um, I know it's just a simple flat brush but let's try it and see what kind of effects we can get from this okay let's make a nice let's make a nice warm color magenta some white and a little blue and plenty of white let's try this and just see what kind of effects we can get from just using a simple flat brush Okay, because sometimes a basic brush is best for some jobs. Let's just go and go like that. If this doesn't work, we can just go and grab a fan brush or something else. Okay. It's just to create a very rough, rough, rough texture. Okay, a very rough feeling. That's all I'm trying to get. Let's go up here and... Give just some pieces, kind of zipping off like that. Then just give the brush another quick clean. Grab some more paint. It's just really trying to give it this kind of bushy feeling. That's all. Okay, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and I will put in some nice bright blues as well in a moment but um, just trying to uh, mess it up a little bit isn't that what they say mess it up let's get some blue lots of white so just with the corner of the brush look just kind of Popping a few dabs in here and there. It's all just to suggest bushes. Okay. I'm going to go up into 
the sky with some of these. Okay, just go right up. You can do this whichever way you like. Okay, if you have your own techniques for doing this, then perfect. Try those. See what happens. Now I'm going to switch to my fan brush. Dampen that, give it a nice clean, and let's go in here and get some of this blue and the white with a hint of magenta. And a little thinners, that will help it go a little further. And let's go up here and just give it a little bit of texture on the top of these bushes. I'm going to kind of soften them down as well. The fan brush is fantastic for creating lots of different techniques and textures, isn't it? You can do so much with the fan brush. It's the go-to brush for so many things. So we have a nice bushy little trail going right along. And you can, even if you want to, you can take a very small, fine, pointy brush, take a little bit of black, and we can pop some dark spots up here and there. Okay. Now this may be the wrong brush for this. Let's just get some little bits of grasses popping up here and there. And you can by all means leave the first layer dry and vice versa if you don't like working wet into it like this by all means then we'll take some white with this brush some nice fine thick white and pop some little touches of white here and there as well okay i mean even little dabs like that just to suggest little bits of snow resting here and there. You see, it doesn't have to be lots of detail. Just a matter of having fun and enjoying it. How about some palette knife? Let's try some palette knife. Let's get some white paint on our palette knife and pop a little white in like that. Okay. See, it just, it's all about just catching the eye, that's all. And you can keep going and keep going and keep going if you wish. It's entirely up to yourself. Okay, I'm going to start this big tree. Um, in fact, what I will do, I'll just finish the bottom end of this first, just where that land, that roadway is coming into play. Okay, I just, I just want to finish that. Let's take some blue and some white, just to sit down these bushes. Okay, you know what I mean. Let's try it. That's good. That'll do, that'll do fine. Okay. This is a little footpath coming along. Let's take a bit of white, pop a little bit of white in there. And I'm just kind of going up into that bush that row of hedges, just a little bit with my brush, okay? And you see I'm kind of dragging some of the brown down as well, some of these pinky browns, just kind of dragging them down. So it's sort of mingling together then, ever so slightly. Isn't that right? 
and take a bit of crimson in this. I want to warm this slightly, a little bit, little bit cool. There we go. Now I'm going to take another fan brush. I want to take a nice new clean fan brush for this, and I'm going to create another layer of bushes. But before I do that, I want to just take some of this light mauve with my fan brush. And I just want to pop some impression of the snow coming down off of those bushes onto the footpath, okay? I don't want such a clean line. So it's just an impression, you see? Just make it look like it's nice and snowy, there's lots of snow on the ground. Then I'm going to, with the same brush, let me get some thinners, I'm going to create another little row just along, I suppose, the edge of the footpath, isn't it? Is that what you would say? Nice little row of dark. Let's take some black, some magenta, and a little hint of burnt umber, but plenty of magenta in this. I want lots of pink. Okay, I want this to be very, very pinky. Now, there we go, let's just get that off my brush. A big chunk of magenta on my brush. A little more black. Let's just go along and give it a suggestion of, you see, little bits of grassy verge, stuff like that. Popping up here and there. Okay, then take my small brush and just pop a little touch of detail, could be little rocks, um, that kind of thing. So you can see how simple I'm keeping all of this. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. I'm not focusing too much on details. Now you can, of course, Keep going with details and details if you like, if you so wish. Um, I just want to keep this a simple painting, but really doing a nice tree. That for me is a focal point. The tree is really what the painting is about for me, okay? I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some white. And a little magenta. And I'm going to suggest a little bit of snow here and there. In between all of that, okay. Now, let's just drag some of that colour across, separating the footpath from the road. I'm going to take some of this dark colour again, right, with some black and some brown. And I'm just going to pop a few strong colours in here and there. Just give it that grassy feel, okay? Now, that'll do fine. Okay. That's not bad so far, is it? Now, I think it needs a little bit more in the way of snow just on some of the grass. So I'm going to pop just a little bit more snow on the grass. Let's get some cadmium red, some white, a little bit of blue and give it some warmth. Okay. Pop a little bit of snow across here, just to give it a bit of texture, that's all. 
Now, I won't have to go any further down than this, okay? I can finish that. It's just a simple colour. In fact, let's just finish it as we're here. Yes? Come on. Let's just go for it. Some magenta, some blue, some white. We could even make this a bit more on the blue side, if you like. Yeah, that's not bad. Pop a little bit more blue in there. Give it more of a shadow colour. Yeah? Let's just pop a little bit more of a shadow colour. A little bit of white as it goes off. Soften that in up there. This is just really an impression of the roadway, that's all. Okay, there we go. You see, we could just leave it like that. It just needs to be simple. I could add a little white in, perhaps further up. Just to make it slightly lighter. But in general, that's really all you have to do. You don't have to go mad with this. It's just a nice thick bed of snow. Uh, I mean, you could add some white with your palette knife if you wanted to just give it a little bit of texture here and there. Okay, just like that, sort of dragging your knife across. Just a little bit of white on your, on, on your knife. You see, just, just to give it a bit more texture, that's all. But you don't really have to. Okay, now, there we are. Now what I will do is, just because it's annoying me a little, I'm going to soften some of this off into the colour behind it, okay? I just don't like that texture, it's a bit much. I should have maybe just left it flat, do you know what I mean? Um, but you know, this is something that you change as you go, isn't that right? We change all these things as we go along, it's our painting, we can do what we like. Soften it off up into those trees. Just a little. There. It's time for the tree, everyone. And this is the nerve-wracking part. It really is. How are we doing for time? Should we call this part one finished? I think we should. Let's call this part one finished, everyone. Let me just sit in front of you so you can see. Part one finished. Uh, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back with part two. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Thank you so much for watching. Don't go anywhere.